The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about a half hour to go until the start of trading and markets in positive territory to kick things off yet again. We got a private payrolls missed this morning ahead of non-farm payrolls on Friday. Alphabet Google crushes it out of the park last night. They're going to be splitting 20 for one. Um, Mike distorted level two high. OK, apologies. Let me see if I can get that down for you. One second for me. Testing one, two. Hopefully that's going a little bit better there. Uh, S&P's right now up 29 points. Let me know if we're doing well right now. The NASDAQ 100 up 177. The Dow up 12 points and the Russell is flat this morning. Saying that again, we got non-farm payrolls on Friday. We got private payrolls with a decrease of 301,000 jobs in January. Why not? We'll bring the headline over right now. Unexpectedly, is the headline, folks, I've been talking about it this week, do not be surprised if the non-farm payroll number comes in negative on Friday. Also, don't be surprised if the market doesn't react too heavily. We're going through quite a spike from the Omicron variant. I'm recovering from COVID myself, my family. Uh, there's no denying the work-life impact that something like that has when it reverberates around the country like it is right now, let alone the unfortunate human toll that it is doing with over 2,000 people a day dying right now. But even if you're not dying, when you're talking business, okay, and, and the humanity of this is really what matters, folks. But the business side of things matters, too, because our economy is necessary for the country to flourish. And you're going to see a weak number, whether it's negative, whether it's zero, whether it's barely in the positive, okay? This is a heads up. We see a decrease of 301,000 jobs in January. But guess what? That number hits. Yeah, we see a little bit of a pullback. There's your, uh, nope, that's not the volatility. Excuse me. Uh... Yeah, it looks like 8.30, nothing. No, too huge dramatic pullback. I mean, you're talking about right now it's 15, 16 points off of the highs of 45.80 this morning. We'll jump over to the NASDAQ 100. Quite a day for the NASDAQ 100, up to 15,260. We've backed off a bit. Google, they are an advertising machine, man. We're going to go over to Google. Google shares Alphabet. 3,010. Folks, we were just trading at 2,500 less than a week ago. You just traded up more than $500. That's a 20% run of the price of Google from where you were less than a week ago. They're going to be split in 20 for one, along with one of the um, just a, a bang out quarter in a big way. And why don't we'll jump over to their numbers real quick as well. Alphabet stock surges 10% on the back of blowout earnings is how they put it there. You jump down to the number, earnings per share, they beat by more than $3. $30.69 per share versus $27.34. Revenue. For 90 days, 75.33 billion versus 72.17. Just amazing, the expectation for these technology companies. And you got Apple crushing it out of the park by billions of dollars in beat. You got Google crushing it out of the park, billions of dollars in beat. Advertising revenue jumped in the quarter. Revenue for the segment, 61.24 billion. Folks, a year ago, they were only pulling in 46 billion. I mean, think about this. Google, okay, now, I remember being in my dorm. I'm going to try and place the year. It was sophomore year, because I can remember. I remember my roommate. Sophomore year. Graduated high school in 98, so maybe freshman year. I'm talking a year, right around the year 2000. Uh, my roommate is a very bright uh, technology major. Um, and he came in and said, Google, you, you know, you want to search the internet, you got to use Google. That was 22 years ago. Okay. They've been accelerating ever since then. Just remarkable over the last year alone that Google is up 33%. Folks, we are changing our tendencies in life. And YouTube uh, is is an entity that is unmatched on the internet, folks. I got kids in the house. They watch Google, YouTube. I watch YouTube. TFNN streams on YouTube. Uh, very robust advertising revenue growth implies the overall demand environment environment has stayed healthy amidst volatile supply chain and macro uncertainties. I would say so. Now you get into cloud. That's going to be a big segment in the future. At least that's the hope of investors. 
Revenue growth of 45%. You're only dealing with $5.54 billion on that number. Uh, 65% year-over-year growth in the number of cloud deals worth over a billion dollars. They like to see that. Uh, Wall Street firms out there up in the air ante. You got 3,900 out there from UBS. Uh, yeah, quite a number indeed. And yeah, Google was one of the best stocks last year. You had quite a pullback there, putting this thing on a three-year weekly. You see the pullback. Folks, we're going to open near all-time highs. You get it all back. You got it all back. So much for the tech pullback uh, of, 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 of carnage. You get it all back on Google. Now, as we go through the week, we're going to get Amazon out with their numbers, I believe, tomorrow. Yes, Amazon will be out their numbers tomorrow after the bell. Amazon's trading up a solid $50 right now as well. Amazon's going to open at about $3,080. Remarkable that you're popping from a low level of 2700 Just like that, Amazon is up, uh, what's that, 11% off of the lows and back at about 3080 We jump over to Apple shares. That's your three-year weekly. Apple's going to trade uh, basically flat. Yeah, over in the market, 174.67. We jump around to the other FANG stock. Microsoft shares up as well with the market by about a dollar from 308 to 309. Maybe that's a little bit of a cloud uh, getting into that as well. Maybe down a little bit more. Let me help my mic. I had a couple people in my office last night, and unfortunately, I think they messed with some of my dials. Uh, okay. Let's jump around to see what else we have going on. I am going to break down those Google numbers a little bit more. So 20 for 1. You're going to be talking about a stock trading right next to Apple almost. I mean, less than Apple. Uh, the split could help Alphabet gain entry into the Dow Industrial Average. You can't be in there at 3,000, that's for sure. Price-weighted index, not going to happen. You're trading at 140, much more in the realm of reasonable that they could be in there. Uh, bringing back stock splits to the market. It's been a while. 20 for 1, aiming to entice numerous small investors who have flocked to the stock market during the pandemic. The stock is trading higher on that one in a big way. And yeah, they said roughly 138. But guess what? We know Google's already trading above 3,000 right now. So you're talking about easy math, $150. And yeah, talk about a relentless rally on Google shares. Dow entry, another motivation could be that they might get into the Dow, price weighted index, a barrier for years. Yeah, Amazon's not getting in there. Google uh, Alphabet is not getting in there. Yeah, archaic weighting system. I've said it many times before, folks. If you ever were like a teacher in a finance class and you said, uh, create a method that you're going to um, design an index and you said, I'm going to make it price weighted that has nothing to do with market capitalization, I'd probably fail that student because it makes zero sense whatsoever to make an index price weighted that has nothing to do with market capitalization. But nonetheless, that is how the Dow works. Share splits have nearly disappeared from the U.S. stock market recently. Only two in 2019, 2019, 47 in uh, 2006 and 2007. And yeah, Apple and Tesla brought it back to attention after they split in 2020. And Tesla, that really accelerated things. We jumped to Tesla shares. They're trading at 933. Through your call, you back Tesla up. Just I got to remember when they split. It might have been right back around here. We'll have to pull it up, Tesla, on the split deal. But nonetheless, Tesla accelerated to 1243. You're back uh, 931 so far for Tesla this morning. We'll get back and uh, we'll take a little bit of a look at that ADP number, folks. A decrease of 301,000 for pirate private payrolls for the month of January. And uh, February 2nd, it's a big day, folks. It's my son's birthday. Happy birthday, Tommy. One year old. One year old. Look at that, folks. That was a quick year. I love it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 28 points right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 169 points right now. We got Google shares, folks, checking in on Google Alphabet, trading right at about 3,000. You got a bid ask of 3,001 by 3,004. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network on Fast Market, breaking down the day's market action, talking about defined risk, talking options, talking earnings. Kevin Hinks, how about those Google earnings, man? You ready to buy some Google at about 150 bucks a share or what? I'll tell you, by definition, it's important that your viewers know that a stock split does not change a company in any financial way. It's called financial engineering, right? And all you do is reduce the price and you get more shares. Now, that being said, I've traded dozens and dozens of these over the years and there is a massive mental aspect of this because you're going to look at google alphabet and you're right it's going to be between 150 and 200 dollars and so that right there changes everything when you look at a company like like this tommy so it's going to be fun to trade this as it comes out and uh yeah it's going to be a big day and by, and by the way don't think for a minute that all eyes don't turn to Amazon with, with, with the same mention as Google trades, you know, three thousand dollars. Amazon trades almost four thousand dollars. Tommy, really remarkable, Actually, man. Uh, we saw about the same price. I should say that. Sorry. And. You, you, just, you make a great point, man. We've, we've all seen it. It's really interesting how they've kind of gone to the wayside, Kevin. I mentioned, um, I think there were only two stock splits in the S&P 500 in like 2019. I think I pulled up. They've kind of gone to the wayside, as we all know. But Tesla, man, um, and Apple as well, they really accelerated. We see it in Google. The advertising numbers, man, I was going over it. I know you've seen it, Kevin. But psh, growing a company that's doing $46 billion last year in the quarter by 33% to 61%. 1.24 billion dollars over a year man just amazing these tech companies can grow 
at 33% over a year. Uh, you can't overstate it, man. So Google accelerating higher. Uh, we have Amazon higher as well. It will be interesting is uh, maybe we get some of these tech companies coming back to a more reasonable level. One of the reasons that you talk about and the team at TD Ameritrade Network, we talk about sometimes on TFNN as well. I learned a lot from you guys saying one of the best ways to trade some of these equities if you can't afford a $3,000 a pop a share is maybe using options. But Kevin, even when you get to $3,000, man, you know, I think Google had a $127 move priced in just yesterday on their earnings. It's still kind of pricey sometimes to use options when you're dealing with equities that are three to $4,000. So interesting that they're gonna bring it down a little bit. Uh, jumping from that to the private payrolls number, we all know that we might get a weak number on Friday, a little bit dicey action when we come in at minus 301. What's your take on that private payroll ADP number this morning? Yeah, you know, the, there was whispers out there that these numbers coming out this week might be weak. I don't think anyone thought they'd be that weak as you look at this number and obviously the Omicron variant has had a pretty big toll on payrolls. What, what was alarming to me, the service providing sector down 274,000 jobs. That's the lion's share of the 301,000. And you know, small companies losing almost half at 144,000. So, yeah, th this is an alarming number. Here's the only thing you can hang on to if you're trading these markets in terms of uh, Friday's non-payroll number. For some strange reason, there's very little correlation between the ADP number and the non-farm payroll number on Friday. The misses are huge. And the average miss on this number is about 294000 So you can do the math on that one, Tommy. But certainly when you look at a sector breakdown and it's from a service providing sector no pluses on the board only natural resources and mining was up 4,000 jobs in the goods providing sector so no pluses in the service providing sector that's a big one Tommy yeah, and it's 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 understandable in my mind, Kevin. I was telling listeners, you know, my, my family had a little COVID outbreak last week. You can kind of hear it in my voice right now, getting over it. Everybody doing well, thankfully. But you talk about a work-life balance, Kevin, even if I hadn't gotten it myself, right? I have a fiance who's out. I got two kids at home, right? You got to take care of the kids. Maybe you're isolating. The disruption in life, man, when you're dealing with this many cases, uh, not surprising that you're seeing some, some harsh numbers in January. But I've also said that man, we come out of this, Kevin, right? My own family included. I got two kids under the age of five in my house that had not had the chance to get vaccinated yet. We were maybe looking for the opportunity to get them vaccinated before we really get out into those big crowds of people talking Disney, talking movie theaters. Well, guess what, man? We're gonna be over that hump now. You know, Disney's in the conversation, getting back out's in the conversation. We've seen a little bit of rotation to some of that, uh, getting back out into the economy trade, whether it's Disney, Uber, travel stocks, et cetera, this week. Um, just interesting as that plays out, but my own personal experience, I'm probably not the only one going through that, man, when these cases are just so high and it's just such a disruption, even at TFNN, right? If we had plans to hire somebody in the last week or two, maybe that gets pushed back, Kevin, you know? And I'm, I know I'm speaking to the masses, you understand it, but when you live it, man, it's, it's easy to see that disruption. But maybe that's a transitory disruption, to use the word of the year. Um, and we look forward, you know, I, I've also stated I don't imagine that's going to have too big of an impact on the Fed or the market, because just like I'm looking forward, I think it's a it's a it's a statement of what we're going through, man. And hopefully we're over this hump and in, in a month that, that things correct themselves. So we go from Google. We got Facebook today, man. We got Meta. They are an advertising giant. They're trading higher this morning. They're already up about nine bucks to three twenty eight. They were just under three hundred bucks a couple days ago. Remarkable acceleration. Uh, what are you looking for Facebook this afternoon, Kevin? Like Foley will do a presentation on Facebook. Alex Coffey and I will be doing the show today. We're bringing back the young man back into the fold for a couple days here as we work with some vacation time. So Alex Coffey and I getting the band back together. So uh, like Foley will do a presentation on Facebook Meta. We'll also trade Qualcomm in the first segment nice. of the show. And here's one that is a lightning ride for attention, at least Spotify in the third segment. So we'll trade uh, Qualcomm, Facebook, and Spotify today.
You got a lot going on this show, man. A, a classic episode with uh, Kevin Hinks and Alex Coffee at the helm of Fast Market. Facebook, man, I've been talking about it. Uh, I got the Oculus Quest 2, I told you, during Christmas, man. Pretty amazed at the technology, but it is going to be remarkable to see how much money they might try and spend to achieve perfection in the world of virtual reality, because it seems like that's almost an endless amount of money that you could be spending. Uh, Facebook will be out after the bell tonight, and they're trading at 328. Kevin, man, you're going to have plenty to talk about today. We Look forward to the program at 12 noon. As always, man, we will be watching. Big day today, Tommy. Have a great day. Thanks for having me on. You too, Kevin. Thanks for the update. As always, we'll be watching at 12 noon today. Folks, it's an outstanding program. Uh, check it out. On days like today, especially, you're going to have the private payrolls talking about. You're going to have Qualcomm. You're going to have Facebook in there and Spotify. Uh, Spotify, no matter what you think, folks, about what they have going on with Rogan, remarkable when you look at the acceleration this thing has from a trader's perspective. You were just down from 300 bucks in November to 164 and now you're opening at 207 right now. We'll see where that thing holds. Spotify right now up three points in the pre-market. S&P's holding on to the gains up 25 points. The Dow actually just slipping into the negative and you get the nasdaq 100 leading the way up 176 points stay tuned folks we'll be coming right back for the opening bell stay tuned Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We get the S&Ps right now up 22 points, jumping around to Google shares. Google even popping at the open. That's quite a gap. How about a gap to all time highs on Google at 3,042? You're trading up $262. That's a 9.5% pop to the upside on Google shares. And they're going to be split in 24 months. You're talking about about 150 bucks a pop for Google shares. We jump over to Amazon. Amazon shares up 48 bucks, pulling back a little bit from the open. We jump over to Meta, Facebook. They're up 1.6%, pulling back a little bit as well. Facebook will be out with their earnings. After the bell, you're talking about a $17 move priced into their number for their earnings tonight. Now, Facebook, going up the line here. Zuckerberg's virtual bet has yet to give Meta a stock boost. So since they announced this in October, the stock is actually flat uh, since that date. Getting down to the numbers here, where we go? Come on. Excuse me one second. I just had it. Here we go. Uh, roughly flat since October when the company changed its name from Facebook to Meta, which got a little bit of... Uh, Tongue in cheek on the internet in terms of uh, really could they just could could they be a little bit more creative in in something than just Meta? But he wants to go full in. There's no way to deny that. Uh, now it's the cheapest of the mega tap mega tech mega cap technology stocks. I'll get it trading at a 20 percent discount to the Nasdaq 100 index. And this has a lot to do with many things. Number one, they announced that name change during a total debacle of basically public relations okay facebook folks i say it all the time do not hang out on facebook it does not do good things for your mindset for your kids period all right instagram i'm a lot more fond of but even instagram the stories come out they are well aware that young girls are just getting destroyed for their personas on instagram because all they're seeing are these unattainable um personas on instagram that they're trying to live up to when you're in the 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 fragile state of any teenager teenager um growing up with that said, the metaverse part of things is pretty enticing, but how much is it going to cost? Okay, Zuckerberg has said the initiative would be a $10 billion drag on operating profit just this year alone. Folks, this is an endless hole of money that you can throw money into. This is going to be like the last mile of delivery, okay? The metaverse is going to be the last mile of delivery. Facebook may not be the company to profit off of the metaverse development because the real holy grail is you know complete immersion in virtual reality and we're years away from that to to say the least okay years away from that uh the oculus twist quest 2 i'm sure there's other vr set headsets out there i know sony's going to come out with one for the playstation apple's got one that's probably going to be on the much higher end one maybe three four five thousand dollars coming out sometime this year maybe late this year but it's going to be a last mile issue where you can get to 96 percent right you can get to 98 percent but you got to get to 100% to really be living it. You got to get to where you put on a headset, you put on a bodysuit, and you can't even tell whether you're in reality or in a computer system. You get to that point, and Zuckerberg knows that he's going to own the universe, okay? But you're going to have to spend a lot of money. So keep that one in mind. Now, with that in mind, the one reason that you maybe want to look at it is because the multiples that it's trading at right now. Uh, the company is valued at less than 21 times earnings for the next year. Not that bad when you talk about these tech companies, especially a company like Facebook that definitely has room to grow. We see how Google is doing with their advertising numbers. The entire NASDAQ 100 is trading at 26 times earnings. This is because of the reasons I'm talking about, folks. Number one, they have a lot of PR problems with their main business, okay? They, uh, they may have some regulation coming down the line. They're in the sights of regulators on both sides of the aisle, but they're going to be spending a lot of money that's going to eat those earnings. All right. $10 billion of earnings is going to go bye bye in 2021 that's going to be dumped into investment in the metaverse. But you're only talking about a company that you're paying 21 times earnings. Not that bad when you think about what you're paying for some of the other companies out there. And we jump to it Facebook shares, you're only up 1.2%. They give most of it back. You were up. To 332. Facebook just gave about 10 bucks. So much for that. Let's see how Amazon's trading. They are out with their numbers on Thursday. A little bit of a give back as well. We jump over to Apple shares, up about three tenths percent. We jump to Microsoft shares this morning, up about three quarters percent at 311. And let's jump over to Tesla shares as well. Actually negative right now, down eight tenths percent for Tesla shares. 
All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. OPEC. OPEC agrees on another gradual oil output hike for March. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com. That's after the next segment. We'll be talking some crude. We'll be talking some forex numbers. Uh, the group has struggled to deliver 400,000 barrels per day monthly increases. You got crude pushing seven-year highs out there. And after a brief meeting, the 23-nation coalition rubber stamped the nominal revival of 400,000 barrels a day from March. We jump over to crude. You're pushing 88.77. We almost made it to 90 bucks. So close. 89.72. Volatility continues. You take a look at crude. Let's put it on a three-year weekly. Talk about a bull run, man. Crude. One of the most remarkable trades from the bottom of the pandemic. I got a low of $6.50, but I think we're all familiar with the hysteria that ensued in April of 2020 when you actually had crude go into negative, what was it, negative $38 a barrel that one contract closed at. And we're going to be pushing $90 by February of 2022. February 2022. Uh, our man Teddy's been calling for $100 crude. Hard to deny that's where the trend is going right now as you're pushing 90 bucks, 88.67, the price of crude. Gold contract up about $3. Gold's just been in a consolidation, folks. We got a bid at about 17.70. We're pushing 18.05 this morning. Gold pulls back last week on Chairman Powell. Uh, this morning we're up about three bucks. But I mean, look at the last year, right? Since April of last year. Look at this cons consolidation. Gold has been trading between about now, we got outliers on both sides, folks, but you use a little linear regression maybe and find the line that best fits. You're talking about a range of about 1770 up to a higher end of about 1850 or so. Pretty tight range for gold considering what's been going on in this market, what's been going on in rates. Uh, gold sitting at about 1805. We jump over to Bitcoin. That's not a tight range at all. Bitcoin, 37,870 off the highs of about 69,000. We jump over to Coinbase. Uh, pushes 162 last week. You're trading at 193 for Coinbase shares so far this morning. We jump over to notes and bonds. We got the 10-year sitting at about 1.8% right now. We put it on a daily. Yeah, and just sitting right near these lows. I mean, we're a full point off of the lows that we've had. But man, you're pushing um, some pretty lofty yields as we're talking about 1.8%. And uh, seems like the trend is to higher yields, folks, to put it lightly. 1.78 as I speak right now, to be exact, 1.78. All right, let's jump around. We also have PayPal, disappointing in a big way, down 22.3%, folks. My goodness, this company, talk about a rise and fall. PayPal, whoops, come on. There we go. PayPal shares dive 22% after the company blames inflation for weak guidance. There's a lot of excuses right now, but the market ain't buying it. And even if it is, it don't care, man. Lower prices are coming. Uh, so the company took a measured approach to guidance, but expects revenue to accelerate in the second half of the year. They're trying to use the uh, uh, low expectations, right? Um, over, under, under promise, over deliver. That's what he's trying to say. Missed user growth targets due in part to 4.5 million illegitimate accounts that joined the platform. They're dealing with fake accounts on Play PayPal now. And getting into it, reporting 6.92 billion in revenue, a slight beat. Earnings, 111, but you're talking about guidance, folks. We'll get into it a little bit more, but you're talking about guidance in a big way. Quite the pullback for this stock, but you might be at the level. Might be a little bit attractive at 135 when you're back to almost 2019 prices. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with our man Teddy Tanks Dad. And we can a special guest at the end of the show. Maybe Are my you son. In the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paper Bytes Investment Newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of crude oil up here. Crude up 48 pennies, trading at 88.68. We make it to a high at 89.72 this morning for light, sweet crude, almost hitting that $90 mark and then trading slightly lower. But man, quite an acceleration. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, folks, at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So... Uh, I like to kick things off with crude because it seems like every day we talk to you on Wednesdays, man, we got new highs and we got new high today, man, of 89.72. I had the headline we talked about earlier, OPEC agreeing on another gradual oil output, but they almost can't keep up with what they want to uh, in terms of supply. What's your take on this crude market, Teddy? Uh, we're going to keep on climbing, baby, and just keep on going <laughs> higher and higher and higher. So, and as far as OPEC, you know, um, they could put, they could pump the, as much as they wanted to if they really wanted to, but they want to make money. Why would you try and increase supply at just under a hundred dollar barrel oil? You know, especially when it was trading in the twenties just a year and a half ago. You know, so I mean, right? I mean, why would you? Oh, I mean, for sure. There's a reason why monopolies, it's, it's, yeah, are, so. are illegal. Exactly. Um, right. And and you know it's it's they're illegal in the U.S. We can't make them illegal across the whole uh, right. world. But yeah, I mean they basically have a monopoly. They all mm -hmm. collude together to make sure that they get the best deal they can for their product. And yeah, why would you want to flood the market when you're getting ninety bucks and it looks like it's just going straight up from here? I agree, man. Sure, sure. Uh, where do you want to kick things off on currencies, Teddy? We have some movement this week, uh, but mm -hmm. what are you looking at at the top of, of the driving the action in the forex market right now? Well, you know, if you look at what's happened since we talked last, uh, the markets are basically, even including oil, are right basically where they were when we had our conversation last week. You know, so we had a breakout of the U.S. dollar on Wednesday and Thursday last week, spiked high on Friday, and now we're coming back. Now, everyone always, always likes to put doom and gloom on the dollar. I really would view what's going on right now as a retracement. And if you look at both the euro U.S. dollar and the pound U.S. dollar, which are the two biggest weights in the dollar index, they're totally in line with the dollar index right now. So you've already had, what is it, a, you're uh, in between the 50% and the 0.618 retracement for both the dollar index, the euro US dollar, and the pound US dollar. Also, you have the US dollar yen that has done the same. This is all 
happening sim- simultaneously today, okay? And they all topped out or bottomed out versus the dollar on Friday, okay? So the dollar index, remember how I've been saying you can't really rely on that, you know, because of the of all the differences of what's going on, the imbalances going yes. on around the different currencies? In the short run right now, we have them all working together, okay? So yeah. this is a short run thing. And I view it only, that's why I'm saying, don't try and pick a top or a bottom. Like, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm not trying to pick a top in oil anytime soon. I wouldn't try and pick a top in the dollar either. Remember that we're coming off of a higher move high. Higher move highs, higher move lows are indicative of what? A bull trend. Same as the opposite for bears. So all the currencies right now are trending. So they're all in a counter trend trade right now. Okay. So I'm just trying to be very clear when it comes to no matter which forex cross you're looking at, even the Australian dollar, US dollar, they're coming off of a major new move low. Okay. So this is an upside correction that's going on. You know, it's not about dollar weakness right now. I think it's a lot of profit taking. You got to remember as you push trends, why wouldn't the longer term traders take some profit? That's how they nibble sure. out and nibble back in, you know, because they've been in it for the whole time. They're working that trade, you know. So I would be very cautious moving forward after today and tomorrow that um, it's very possible to see reversal and dollar strength come raging back. Yeah, I mean, I was jumping around to some three year weekly charts and really you only got to go back about a year or so to see and, and the trend is pretty intact, man. I hear you. I mean, we have some bounces, but you put mm -hmm. this thing on a weekly going back about a year and I was jumping around whether it was the euro, whether it was the yen, whether it was even the pound. Um, and yeah, you're seeing action, but basically you're seeing action within the trend um, right. on that longer term basis for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned you're not selling out on crude. So here's, and I know you're looking for higher prices than a hundred bucks, but let's say you have been long crude as investors. I'm sure we have investors out there that have been long crude. Um, what are you gonna start to look at? Cause I've started to do this in my head. Like, okay, I think you've been calling a hundred bucks. We gotta go back to the to the tape, man, and find when the first time you put out that hundred buck mark. Cause it was a while ago, I think it was ago, January. Man. I think it was January of a year ago. It was around then. It was a little, it was around Kudos a year ago. Kudos to you, man. Yeah. Heck of a call and it's still going. Um, so let's say we make it to a hundred bucks. What do you mm -hmm. start looking at? And I know you've said previously, if people are listening, that you're looking for much higher prices than that. But what do you start to look at in that market, Teddy, as we get to a hundred bucks, that maybe like you're talking about people nibbling in the Forex market, do people start nibbling and maybe selling up there? Or what do you look and as we maybe approach those levels that seem, I don't want to call them inevitable because we know how the market mm -hmm. goes, but that is where the trend is going right now for sure. Sure. Um, that's You know what? That's a fantastic question. Um, now, when it comes to the oil, I think definitely once we approach this 95 to 105 area, we're hitting that threshold. I mean, remember that oil has been up at 150 a barrel before, okay? And you think about the price of gas when it was there, um, especially in a state like Illinois, we have higher taxes on our gas than we did 20 years ago, okay, 15 okay. years ago. So just that point alone, as gas gets, or as oil appreciates, gets above $100 and stuff like that, that inflationary um, price point right there restricts the economy. Then you throw in the inflation we already have and how it's gonna compound even more and solidify the inflation of goods and um, services that this is going to start to really put a lag on the economy. You know, I really think that people are gonna start tightening up their bootstraps because one, the free money is over, time to pay the piper and everything's getting more and more expensive. So I think you're gonna see, you know, how everything's opening up. I don't think people are gonna be going out as much as you think, you know? I mean, it's gonna be very expensive moving forward through the next, at least no matter what, there's not gonna be a retraction or any type of deflation for at least six months in the economy, okay? So as we come into summer, when you think everyone's gonna break out and go outside, I think we're gonna see what we saw during COVID of, 20, of 2020. You're gonna see a lot of people having parties in their backyard. They're not gonna be going out to restaurants. They're just not. You know, you can't afford it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's, it's it's sticker shock everywhere and it's not going to get any better anytime soon. You know, um, now here's the thing, though, if oil retraces solidly off of, you know, I mean, here's the thing. If Biden would reverse January 20th of 2021. This, this would change overnight and literally within months the oil factor wouldn't be there anymore because we would see oil, crude oil trading at thirty five forty dollars a barrel it would so drop if he would like what? a rock what was the if, if, if what if, would happen if, if if he would overturn everything that he did on january 20th of 2020 you know the mandates okay. against the oil industry you said but 2021 i just wasn't sure 2020 yeah, sure, 2021 yeah. i'm sorry 2021 so it, okay it, unless that happens which that would retract oil but that's not going to happen so unless we become a, yeah. a big producer of oil again and start pumping it out there for us you know build up our stocks really quickly 
and that would retrace things. But that's the only factor that would do that, you know. So otherwise, we're going to hold where we're at, and we'll be at 150 in another year. You know, that's not a, and that would only be only be like a 45 to 50 percent appreciation from where we're at now. Not as big sure. as what we've seen in the last year. You know, we've seen yeah. more than 100 percent price increase in oil. You know, we've seen 300 percent. You know, so. Yeah. Just that if you look at it, we're actually slowing down, but we're slowing down into a buffer zone that's going to be really hard on the economy. You know, I remember I've been telling you for months I went back in the fall. I'm like the major economic numbers are now the numbers to watch Unemployment, You know, I mean, CPI, totally. PPI. These are the things that matter. So thanks Friday, a lot, guys. Friday's you have a good week. Teddy, man. Great, great segment, man. I appreciate it always on Wednesdays. Folks, check out Teddy's website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Can't wait to see where we are next Wednesday, Teddy. Always always uh, quite an eventful US seven days. US dollar yen still going to 122. <laughs> There we go, folks. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Have a great one, Teddy. your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, and we got a special guest. Who do we got? We got our man Tommy O'Brien the Ford. Say hi to everybody, buddy. He's got his phone, folks. He's ready, and you check out. He's not going to be happy with taking his phone. What's your shirt say, buddy? What's it say? Year of the Tiger, folks, 2022, and it's his birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. One years old, Tommy O'Brien. 
So he wanted to say hello to everybody. He's going to be making some appearances. We're going to get him a show slated uh, for TFNN coming in the year 2029. Maybe we'll get his program up there. Um, but he's ready. He's ready for the year of the Tiger. He's ready to be one years old, and he wanted to say hello to everybody. Huh, buddy? And let me tell you, folks, nothing like life. Tell him, buddy. Tell him. Yes. 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 He's excited, too. He's excited. Huh. Are you excited for your birthday? He's even got a little tiger pacifier, folks. Can't beat it. Happy birthday, my man. Uh, the market, folks, can't beat the market right now either. S&P's giving it back, but we're still up by 18 points. You got the NASDAQ 100. What's it up, buddy? It's up 102. You see Google split 24 one, Tommy? Get you some Google shares, maybe at 150 bucks a pop instead of 3,000. We're trading at 29.77. Google's still up 8% right now. We jump over to Facebook. How's Meta doing, Tommy? You're going to be living in that virtual reality world when you're. Can you imagine, folks? Can you imagine? This is what I try and do. Can you imagine what kids these days? Can you imagine what the world's going to be like when he's just my age, 41 years old? What's it going to be like? I mean, there's going to be flying cars. Um, we probably will have virtual reality wearing suits. Um, it's almost impossible to imagine what the world is going to be like at that time. But it's coming. It's coming in a big way. One year old, the year of the tire. Gotta love that outfit. Look at those chunky thighs. Oh, yes. Tell him, buddy. Tell him. He's excited, too. He's excited. He's a dancing man, huh? Tell him. He wants to do everything, buddy. He wants to play with the mouse. He wants to play with the keyboard, huh? He's got it all. He's quite a smart little man. And we love him so much. We do. Mwah. All right, folks. Stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Is Basil coming up next? He is. <gasps> Are you playing peekaboo? He loves peekaboo. Where'd he go? Tommy, there he is. You say goodbye to everybody. Can we wait bye? Say bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Great Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Bye.